Good morning everybody, welcome to today's service, the first Sunday in August, the first of August. So welcome so much to our service today. And as we come to worship this morning, let us remember that the First Nations peoples of this land have always been and always will be stewards of this land. And we recognise their deep connection with the earth, the sea and the natural world. For this, we give them thanks and pray for their elders, past, present and emerging. And our opening hymn today is Jesus Calls Us Here to Meet Him. joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. So let us pray. God of love and God of grace, we praise you now and always for the love you show us through sending your son Jesus to be the very bread of life that sustains us. How can we ever thank you enough? Believe in him is what Paul tells us to do, and this, and in this we shall give our all, O God, knowing that you forgive us our mistakes and bring us ever closer to you. Through Christ, the bread of heaven, we offer you our prayers. Amen. Where Christ is, there is peace. Let us gather as the children of God. Let us be seekers of peace on earth. And as we light this candle of peace, let us offer a sign of this to those who we are with and to the world. Amen.
peace be with you wherever you may be. And our next hymn is one of my favourites. We have a gospel to proclaim. Listen to the words from Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity himself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, 
for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. For the stories from the founding of our church, thanks be to God. And now our Gospel reading this week again from John's Gospel, beginning at chapter 6, verse 24. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. For the good news that Christ brings, thanks be to God. So, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So, who are you, really? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Have you ever tried to answer it? What motivates you in this life and what turns you cold? Are you happy to explore your feelings and emotions or do you prefer to keep them locked away in your secret private emotions box? What do you believe in? And what for you is a difficult stretch to believe in? Do you tend to look after your spiritual needs or your physical needs? Or are you somewhere in between? Do you hate ministers asking you such questions? Well, my apologies, but these are some of the questions that have been raised after reflecting upon our scripture readings this week, as there is this huge question behind them both about living what we believe. The more I read of Paul's letters, the more I come to be amazed by him and respect him. From the time of his conversion on the road to Damascus, as we read about in Acts chapter 9, Paul has gone from someone who persecuted Christians zealously to someone willing to sustain imprisonment, beatings, 
and hardship for this very same Jesus Christ that he was against. If on the way to Damascus we were to ask Paul who he was, he would have said something like a Pharisee named Saul, a highly educated Jew and a Roman citizen, a stickler for Jewish law and a hater of those who follow Jesus. If we asked him after his conversion, he would have said something along the lines of, well, an apostle of Jesus Christ named Paul, who believes the crucified and risen Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead and to bring the believers home. Certainly a radical transformation through his belief. When he writes his letter to the Ephesians, he is in prison again. And yet he does not moan about it, but is celebrating in a way because he has been imprisoned for preaching about Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Paul is in Christ. In other words, his whole life is centred on his relationship with Jesus. And he is willing to be in prison because, because Paul believes in Jesus. And although a rare occurrence, it is in this passage that Paul refers to Jesus as the Son of God and urges all his readers to believe in this, to have faith. In the Gospels, Jesus asks his disciples, and this includes you and me, who do you say that I am? At some point in our life, we have to answer that question. After Paul's conversion, he was happy to say that Jesus was the Messiah. But here in this passage from John's Gospel, Jesus begins to answer it himself. It is the first of a number of I am speeches that Jesus makes. And it is a powerful one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The bread of life. Bread is such a strong image in the Bible. We have just heard recently about 5,000 plus people being fed their fill from bread that used to be five small loaves. There is also the story of a feeding of 4,000 plus people, also with a small number of loaves of bread. When the Israelites are preparing to leave their captivity in Egypt, they are told to prepare unleavened bread so that they can escape quickly. Bread is a food staple the whole world over. And I cannot forget an image I once saw where during a famine in Africa, Loaves of bread were flung from the backs of trucks out into the crowd and people were flocking together like seagulls to get a few loaves to feed their hungry families. As human beings, there is a need for food and bread is a perfect symbol for this need. It is such a pity that in these days that we live in, when some people can build aircraft that can take them into the lower reaches of space just for a thrill and the possibility of making more money, other people find it hard to scrape together a few crumbs in order to survive. Something is way out of balance here. Something we need to do something about. <coughs> the crowd who follow Jesus to the other side of the lake are the people that had just been satisfied with somebody handing bread to them. They have full bellies and they wish to keep close to the source, the one who can make sure that they have enough bread to eat. With hindsight, we can laugh at them because they have missed the bigger picture, despite just being fed from five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. The crowd asks Jesus, Show us a sign so that we can believe in you. What? Did you miss it? Did you think Jesus pulled all that bread and all those fish out of a small bag like a magician? Did you not see the divine miracle that took place? Jesus urges the crowd to work for the food that will bring them eternal life, not the food that will perish. 
It reminds me of the temptations Jesus faced after his baptism and his reply to Satan that humanity does not live by bread alone. This is because Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life, etc., etc., is a spiritual statement. It is a statement that says, believe in me and you will never be spiritually hungry or spiritually thirsty again. It is a statement that connects us to God now and forever, even though sometimes we may feel dry in our prayers and that God is somehow distant or even absent from us. But we share in that miracle today as we together we celebrate Holy Communion. We remember what Christ did for us, how the bread of life, the body of Christ was broken, but through this action we gained eternal life with the Father. Believing is the work of God and is the essence of our calling. When Jesus says, follow me, we only do so if we have some kind of belief in what he can do, no matter how small that belief might be. This is our own road to Damascus moment. It is our conversion and the beginning of our journey and relationship with Jesus. Paul believes this to be a noble thing, a hugely important thing, and one that we should live in a manner worthy of our calling. Our life in Christ should be lived with humility, gentleness, patience, bearing one another in love, and should be unified with others who have accepted this call. These are easy things for us to keep in mind as we go about our daily lives. When we curse somebody, or when we call somebody names, or when we take something that maybe somebody else should get. And they're those words that we can return to should we realise that we have strayed from the path. So here again in these words is that call for Christian unity. Here again is that reminder that as followers of Christ, we should be in complete fellowship with those who are also followers of Christ. The call to be a Christian is at first a personal call, but is also a call to be in community, to be supportive of one another, to pray for one another, to share hospitality with one another, but also to show these traits with those who do not call themselves Christian, simply because they are also humans and part of God's creation. Every person on earth deserves respect, dignity and love. For they are God's children, just as much as we are God's children. So in light of all this, I ask the question again, who are you? Do you live out your faith in humility, and gentleness, patience and forbearing? If Jesus tells you that he is the bread of life, are you filled or are you still hungry? The bread of life has been broken for you and reformed as the body of Christ. Jesus is calling you into this body. Amen. So let us pray. Jesus, our loving Lord, we offer you our grateful hearts in that you promise to be the bread of life that sustains us on this journey of faith that we are on. Help us to be your humble servants loving others as you have loved us now and for always. Through your precious name we pray. Amen. And together now, let us say the affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, 
He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Amen. So now, as a community of Christ, let us pray for the community around us. Jesus, bread of the world, receive our prayers for all your people, for those who hunger for freedom, for justice, for release from poverty and disease, for all who struggle for the peace and welfare of the world. When we are greedy and take what is not ours, when we stockpile food while others go hungry, put a right spirit within us that we may share with justice the resources of the earth and feed your hungry people. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, food of pilgrims, receive our prayers for your body, the church. For all who hunger to know your forgiveness and love. For all teachers and pastors and all who bring your good news to others. When we preach a message that neither satisfies nor disturbs. When our divisions and discord make your gospel hard to hear. Empower your church anew that we may be strengthened for your ministry and feed your hungry people. Jesus, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, receive our prayers for all who are in need, for all who are in anguish, sorrow, confusion or fear, for all who are sick or are in pain. We pray especially for the people of New South Wales and now Brisbane who are under lockdown and we give thanks that because we followed the rules, we are free. When we wander in the desolate places of life, when we abandon ourselves to your goodness, fill our emptiness and satisfy our longings, make us courageous in adversity, and give us compassion for all who suffer, that we may feed your hungry people. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community in particular, Lord, we bring before you those known to us in need of prayer. For Sandra and her niece Desiree. For Jim and Grant and Cyril. For Jill and Ian. For Ivy, Gus and Ian. For Chrissy, Brady and Kelsey. And for Barbara, Paul, Lorraine and for June. We continue to pray for Beryl and Ray and Phil and Bob. We pray for Jan and Wall. For Faye. Continued prayers for Pearlie and for Kathy. For Shaquille and for Denzel. For Jessica. For Nancy. For Jane. For Ross and Beck, Daniela and Mason. And for all those in need of prayer, but have not made their requests known. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now together in whatever language we feel most comfortable with, let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those that sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our communion hymn today is Bread for the World. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for you have sent us bread from heaven to give life to the whole world. You are above all and through all and in all, and by your word all things were created. You fed your people with manna from heaven, and even when they defied you, if they turned from their callous ways, you fed them again with your wisdom and truth. In your Son Jesus Christ, you have offered yourself to us as the bread of life, that we might be nourished and built up as one body in the bond of peace. Though he was murdered by those he fought to save, you raised him from the depths of the earth to fill the whole universe with his gifts and baptise all things into one body, held together by one spirit under one Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious names in songs of never-ending praise, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Because of your great love for us, you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to show us how to live with you and with one another, and to empower us to proclaim the wonders of the Gospel. By his example, he showed us what it meant to witness that the Kingdom of Heaven had drawn near, and he did so even though it cost him his life. And so, O oh God, we remember his sacrifice for us as we celebrate this holy meal as your faithful disciples in obedience to his command on that fateful night. On that night, the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and blessed it, giving you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup of wine, blessed it and gave it to his disciples to share, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you as a symbol of the new covenant between you and God. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on the bread and wine that we have spread before us in our homes, and we pray that we who eat and drink them as members of the body of Christ are refreshed in our own body and spirit to continue our journeys of faith with you, following you wherever you lead us. Come, all is prepared. Let us together, wherever we may be, Share in this holy feast. Body of Christ broken for you. symbol of the new covenant shed for us. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for what you have provided for us, your own Son, Christ our Lord. We give thanks that in this holy feast we are connected to you and with your disciples of each and every age, and that we can leave this time of worship strengthened and encouraged by your Holy Spirit. Amen. As a community, let's share some notices that we have.
uh, next Sunday we will be online once again so we look forward to your company for that we will also be live at church uh, so it will be a 9.30 service it will be limited to 15 people so I will need you to get in touch with me and let me know if you wish to attend that uh, it will be COVID safe, masks will be worn, Q, uh, you'll sign in with QR code, everything will be sanitised, uh, but we can come together and share worship together at the church. And hopefully next week restrictions will come down and we can go back to the two square metres and we can have more people at church, but that's how we are at the moment so if you want to come to the live service next sunday please get in touch with me email phone facebook and uh, let us know that you want to come uh, just a reminder of backpack for kids uh, a charity organization have asked us to take part in decorating uh, christmas stockings for children in need and filling those up uh, so if you would like to take part in that, uh, if you're handy and crafty and good with your hands, uh, let us know and we'll make sure you get some stockings to fill and to decorate. Uh, one of the people we support is, uh, or an organisation we support is Frontier Services, uh, who run Bush Chaplains. Uh, they're we always have a barbecue for them, raise funds for them. We are going to have a live barbecue, hopefully on Saturday the 23rd of October. But for the moment, they're running something different. It's a virtual barbecue where you purchase a ticket. Each ticket costs $20 and they're very easy to purchase. If you just go on Frontier Services website uh, and follow the links and whatever, you can purchase a ticket for $20 and all of that money goes to the work of Frontier Services. Um, next notice on Saturday, September the 4th, hopefully uh, if COVID stay settled here in Melbourne. We're going to have a time of prayer and contemplation uh, called Quiet Time by a Tree. Uh, it goes for two hours, followed by a BYO lunch. And if you would like to attend that, there'll be time of contemplation, there'll be some activities, time of prayer, and a, a good time of fellowship. So, uh, if you want any more details get in touch and I can hand those on to you and also just to let you know that Phil Martin is trying to put together an art show to be held at our church on September the 18th and he's asked me if there are any interested parties out there any local artists who would like to contribute some of their work to that show and possibly sell some of it um, if you get in touch with either Phil or myself through Facebook or emails or the usual way, um, that would be great. So that's for the September the 18th. We'll have an art show at the church. Okay. So we come now to our words of mission. Go out from here and live lives worthy of the one calling which we all share. In humility, gentleness and patience, speak only what is true and loving, and so grow into the unity that is ours in Christ. And our blessing. Jesus is the bread that sustains the whole world. As we carry out our mission in Christ's name, let us also sustain the people that we come into contact with, showing them Christ's love and be his welcoming arms to them. As we do, know that the blessings of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit go with you now and forevermore. 
Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In Christ's name. Amen. And our final hymn. How could we have the story of the bread of life without guide us, O thou great Redeemer? <laughs> today. We wish you a blessed week and a happy and healthy week and we will see you next Sunday online. Bye for now. Bye.